Speech is not a, a, good, a good indication of intelligence. Some really stupid people never stop talking. Some geniuses never speak. This sentence was written by an eight-year-old little girl who was diagnosed with severe autism and who cannot speak. We'll call her Lucy. If you were to simply look at her and observe her absence of responses to any of your questions, you would not begin to believe that she actually understands everything you tell her. You wouldn't believe how strong and diverse her emotions are, how funny and creative her mind can be. Lucy is now able to communicate with us by typing on a letter board. And she's been describing to us, letter by letter, word by word, the painful struggle it's been for her to be locked in her own body, understanding everything said around her and about her, and desperately wanting to answer, but her body and mouth refusing to cooperate. She can't be a unique case. About a third of the autistic population remains incapable of using speech at school age. In Australia only, that represents about 50,000 people. And despite an increasing amount of studies done on autism, this non-speaking subgroup of the population is often considered too difficult to test and so remains largely unstudied. And yet, how many more of these children are like Lucy? For my PhD, I am developing a test of language comprehension for autistic children who don't speak. To do this, I use recording electrodes placed on their scalp, which measure directly their brain electrical activity when they hear spoken language. If these children do understand language, I expect their brain to respond differently upon hearing sentences that make sense compared to abnormal sentences. In this way, without asking them to purposely say anything, I intend to bypass what these children's vocal system can and cannot do, and to instead look directly at what's responsible for understanding language, the brain. The results I got so far are very promising. I was able to observe Lucy's intact language comprehension directly from her brain, without her having to do or say anything. I now plan to test other children who were never able to communicate and find out how many more non-speaking children actually understand what they hear. My research could have tremendous impact and assist in choosing appropriate care and treatment for each particular child. It could potentially change our scientific understanding of autism. And maybe even more importantly, rescue those lost voices from silence.